Mr. District Attorney, Champion of the People, Defender of Truth, Guardian of our fundamental rights to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. And it shall be my duty as District Attorney not only to prosecute to the limit of the law all persons accused of crimes perpetrated within this county, but to defend with equal vigor the rights and privileges of all its citizens. The case of deadly devotion. You have no idea how these old phonograph records take me back, Mr. St. Charles. Look, here's Dardanella, remember? You select whatever you want to hear, Mrs. Post. The other club members will enjoy it, I know. Well, honestly, I don't know when I've enjoyed myself so. Oh, here's the two black crows, my, my. You do like it here, then? I mean, at the Devotion Club? Like it? Why, Mr. St. Charles... Harry, please. What? Oh, thank you. Do I enjoy it? For I think what you're doing here is simply wonderful. I hope so. People our age, people in the flush of life, you might say, have a difficult time making new friends. We don't hear, I'll say that. I'm glad you feel that way. You especially, Laura. The moment you came into my office, I... Is something wrong? Uh, well, oh, I'm sorry, but that man seems to be beckoning to you. There, that one near the door. Near the door? Oh. Oh, yes, I... I see. You know him. He doesn't look like one of the members. What? Will you excuse me, my dear? I'll see what he wants. Oh, don't worry about me, Harry. I'll pick out the records before the members start running. You don't look glad to see me, Harry. Nick. Nick, my boy. I... Oh, don't we shake hands, Harry? Back when we were cellmates, I thought we got to be pretty good friends. Nick, you can't stay here. Look, my boy. What I... do you mean, can't? I had quite a time looking you up, pal. Yeah, you get quite a layout here. What's the gimmick? Look, I'll uh, I'll give you my address. I have a house. No kidding. We can talk later on, but please, Nick. The Devotion Club, huh? What do you do? Get a lot of old dames in here and take them? Don't say that. Really, you must go, Nick. It, go! It... Come off it, pal. We're buddies, remember? Coop in the same hatch back in stir. Yes, I know, my boy, but... Go! Are you flubstruck, Harry? I'm gonna stay. <laughs> Oh, I picked that information request out of the file, Chief. The one from St. Louis. Oh, which one was that, Harrington? A young punk named uh, Oliver. Oh. Nick Oliver. Oh, I saw that when it came through. Uh, he was released from prison out there, wasn't he? That's right, Miss Miller. And from looking at his record, he's on his way back. St. Louis thinks he's here in town. That's the tip they got, Chief. Mm -hmm. For the bum like him, even when he's released, it pays to keep an eye on him. Well, what is his record? I didn't read all the report. Well, <clears throat> little Nick is quite a boy, it seems like. He's got an arrest record as long as your arm. And there's a charge against him now? Well, they want to talk to him about a little accident, Chief. It seems the day he got out, a pal of his turned up with a hole in his head. What? That's right. Then it turns out the dead guy ratted on Nick in the first place. It was his testimony that sent him up. They didn't pick him up? No, it happened in a little town outside of St. Louis, Chief. Mm. By the time the local boys notified the city, Nick was on his way. And they think he's here? Yeah, it looks that way. I've been doing a little checking up on him this morning. Oh, any luck? No, it's a little early, Chief. They're sending us his prison record, personnel report, all that. Mm -hmm. If he's got some pals in town, chances are he'll look him up. Well, let's hope so. The St. Louis authorities have helped us a great deal in the past. I'd like to return the favor. Oh, I'll find him, Chief. <laughs> Bums like that always go in a pattern. Well, how do you mean? Well, that's one way you find a guy, Miss Miller. You study his habits. Find out what kind of bars he hung around in. What kind of people. Uh-huh. Get a line on him. You know, what kind of dames he goes for. Whether he likes sports, drives a car, his clothes, anything. Yes, the personnel report should contain most of that. Sure, then as soon as we know what kind of a guy he is, we pass the word along the places where he might show up. And then wait for a tip. Tips help. Isn't it strange criminals are so willing to turn each other in? Well, it really isn't strange, Miss Miller. It's part of the criminal nature. Fear. That's right. And when he turns a pal in, he feels safer for a little while. You'd think they'd realize that someday they all get caught. Yes, they do. That's the basis of the fear. Take this man Harrington's trying to find. Nick Oliver? Yes. 
Wherever he is right now, he's afraid. And why? Because he knows that sooner or later we'll get him. And we will. I didn't realize you were here in my office. I thought it better to wait in here, Harry. I'm delighted. Have you been waiting long? There isn't much here to amuse you, I'm afraid. It's quite all right. I was reading an article in this week's Colliers. Oh? It's most entertaining about Mr. District Attorney. You know, the radio program. I'll have to read it. Sit down, my dear. No, thank you. You seem so, so formal, Laura. Is anything wrong? Yes, Harry. A great deal. I don't understand. I, I thought the dance last night was most enjoyable. Who is that man, Harry? A uh, man? I think you're evading me. I mean Mr. Oliver. Nick? Why, he, he's an old friend, Lord. I, I, I told you that. He's been here a week, Harry. Have you any idea how much the club has changed in that short time? Changed? In what way? Good heavens, are you blind? Do you realize that man encouraged the members to gamble... Yes, and to drink. Now, Laura... Oh, you needn't put your arm around me, Harry. I'm disgusted. I wrote my sister about it last night. Now, Laura, listen to me. Perhaps you're right. Perhaps. When that nice Mrs. Webster lost $43 playing dice... As I say, Nick is impetuous. I shouldn't have permitted him to stay. Oh, he's a very bad young man, in spite of that smile of his. I tell you, Harry, this has changed my opinion of everything. Including us? Well, to tell you the truth, I haven't made up my mind. There's something wrong here, Harry. Uh, Laura, my dear, wait. No, I'm going home now. I've had my say. Home before the dance tonight? I won't be at the dance, Harry. I, I'm not sure I shall return here at all. But the money... Uh, Harry... I mean, you decided to do so much. I have my doubts about that, too. Goodbye, Harry. Harry, do you think... It's quite all right, Mr. Oliver. I was just leaving. Laura, wait. Thank you. No. Goodbye. Let's eat in the old bag. You fool. You blundering idiotic. Oh, no, I'm wrong. I'm the fool, not you. It's a trouble, pal. She looked pretty steamed up. I was crazy to let you stay crazy. I'll wait back on that again. I told you, Harry, you ain't got much choice. I was getting along so well. Yeah, well, now you're doing even better. And you can stop yakking about getting rid of me, Harry. What do I tell these old crows where you and me met? Dice tables, liquor in the punch, shakedowns. In heaven's name, Nick, what are you trying to pull? Oh, I need plenty, pal. This is as good as any joint to get it from. But I don't operate that way. I told you I play it slow. Well, that's too bad. I play it fast. What was her name? What? The dame in the uproar just now. It was Mrs. Post. Laura Post. Yeah, well, she can take the... Wait a minute. Is that the one? The one what? The dame you were building up for the big one. Sure it was. I remember the name. She has $20,000 in convertible bonds. She's got what? I've worked on her for three months personally. And now it's all for nothing. She was going to kick in twenty grand. She was, even if I had to marry her. Where'd she go, huh? I imagine so. She's washed up, though. You and your quick scheme scared her off. Where does she live, Harry? I never mind. I'll get it from my members. You stay away from her. And you think you could change her mind, you? Change it? You're oh. why she pulled out. It's a washup, I tell you. <laughs> you know, you con boys give me a pain. Twenty grand and you quit like a spoiled kid. I know when a score is cold, Nick. Yeah, well, I know when it's hot. Twenty G's, Harry, my boy. That's plenty hot. Now, where are you going? Calling. What? You heard me. I'm calling on Mrs. Post. <laughs> Oh, come in, Harrington. Yeah. I, I didn't want to bust in, Chief. That's oh, quite all right. I just thought I'd bring you up to date on Nick Oliver. Oh, uh, the one they want in St. Louis? That's my boy. Oh, I got a pile of dope on him. Brother, he's something. Yes? Yeah, he started out when he was 13 years old. He stuck up a gas station, and when the attendant was slow with the money, little Nick hit him with a hammer. No. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's only the beginning, Miss Miller. The bum's record runs six full pages. Uh, any idea where he is now? No, not yet, Chief, but I got a good lead. Yes, what is it? Well, a punk that looks like him 
hit town about a week ago. Mm-hmm. Come in by a bus from over the state line. Do you think it's Nick? Well, maybe, but I know this, Miss Miller. When a rip and tear man like that arrives, a lot of guys know about it. Yeah, and fast. Yeah, it's remarkably fast, usually. That's the grapevine, Chief. Mm-hmm. And today they're saying there's a baby faced guy like Nick in town. <laughs> Yes? Uh, just a moment. I'll turn on the porch light. No need for that. I could see okay. Now, see here. Just what... The... Oh, it's you. I got to talk to you, Mrs. Post. It's about uh, something that happened at the club. The devotion club? Uh-huh. I don't want to hear about uh, it. Let's sit down. I'd, uh, how about in here? Now, see here. I've said I don't want to discuss anything. Why, I was getting ready for bed. Now, this is important, Mrs. Post. It's for your own good. For my own good? Whatever do you mean? You and Harry? I beg your pardon? I told you it was important. Go on. Sit right down and relax. Come to the point, please. Ah, that's fair enough. Uh, Harry tells me you've got 20,000 bucks laying around. What, what do you want, Mr. Uh, Oliver, isn't it? Uh, Nick's enough. And I want to tip you off, Mrs. Post. It's just a friendly gesture. I think perhaps you'd better leave. I'm playing straight with you. You take the dough and put it in a big, strong bank. You understand? I'm sorry. I think all this is, uh, well, to say the least, Mr. Oliver, none of your concern. You're sure hard to convince. Look, will you promise me one thing? Hardly. Yeah, well, first thing in the morning, take the dough and put it in a bank. I never heard of anything like this in my life. Is that too much to ask? Put it in a bank? Uh, Very well. Suppose I promise you. Now will you go? Uh, Be more definite. You'll... Put it in tomorrow? Yes, yes. Now, will you please leave my house? (laughs) That's funny. And Harry said I wasn't smooth. That's a laugh. What do you mean? Kid, you just told me the one thing I wanted to know. What? I had to be sure that those here, didn't I? Now, get it up. Get it up? Come on, come on. Let's not waste time. Where do you keep it? You get out of here. Well, you listen to reason. I'm a busy man, baby. Get to the dough. I don't believe it. I just don't. Look, I got no time to fool around. If I have to, I'll kick this joint upside down. But... Yeah, and I may have to take a few belts at you. Now get smart, will you? Just hand it over nice and easy. I... I'll do nothing of the kind. Don't look so greedy at the phone, kid. You reach for that and I'll break your little arm. But do you realize what you're doing, do you? Yeah, I do. But you don't. I'm getting sore, sister, and that ain't good, you know. I... But I haven't got the money here. You lie in your teeth. You just said so. Now, get it up fast. Uh, Mr. Oliver, listen Never to me. Never mind the routine. I got one of my own. You what? How many rooms in this dump? Eight? Nine? I can go through them in an hour. You wouldn't dare. If I have to look for the scratch, that is. And you know something, baby? I just can't do a good job with you around, Bob. I, I don't understand. Oh, it's simple. Either you hand over the dough like a good kid, or I'll kid you kill me. You... I'd have to, if I have to search for it. <laughs> you see? You've got a gun. Oh, that's the flash of the week. Okay. Make up your mind. Oh, please. Where's I... the dough? I... I don't know. Oh, I'll be... You shot me. Help me, please. You'll make it tough on yourself, sister. Yeah, and on me, too. Now I gotta tear this joint apart. There's enough reporters out in that yard to cover a World Series. Well, I don't wonder, Harrington. Mrs. Post is very prominent in this city. Yes, we're about ready to add up, Harrington. Yeah? Has Dr. Colgan finished? Uh, yes, just about, Chief. He fixes the time of death is between 9 and 11 last night. That's mm-hmm. right. Shot once at about two feet away. Uh, what about the doors and windows? Did Brophy check? Just finished, Chief. Every one of them closed and locked from the inside. I see. How about inventory, Miss Miller? Well, I've been trying to get somewhere on that... 
Her nearest relative is a sister, but she lives in Chicago. Yes, well, perhaps one of the neighbors can estimate what's missing for us. You know, right. Chief, there's one thing I don't like about this. Yes, what's that? Well, when the grocery kid discovered something was wrong this morning and called the patrolman... Yes? It looked like a nice, neat case of robbery. And? I mean, everything's just like we've seen it many times before. The house all ransacked and the dame dead. Yes, yes, that's the impression, at least. She probably resisted, and the burglar got panicky and shot. Except for one thing. Well, what's that? Well, just look around, Miss Miller. There's her purse with ten bucks still in it. There's a gold lighter on the table. Upstairs, there's a hunk of jewelry on her dresser. Yes, yes, I saw that, too. Say, uh, take a look at that purse, Miss Miller. All right. This was a burglary. The guy sure passed up a lot of nice items. Oh, it is strange. Still, if he were frightened after he shot, he might have run out. Say, yeah. Chief. Yes? Here's something odd. In her purse? Yes. Mm. Mrs. Post belonged to the Devotion Club Limited, mm. whatever that is. Uh, here's her membership card. The Devotion Club? Uh-huh. Are you kidding? Why? Do you know anything about it, Harrington? Well, sure I do. Well, maybe not that particular outfit, but I've heard that name. Mm -hmm. It's one of those agencies that helps people meet other people. Really? Yeah, most of them are on the up and up, but sometimes they're not. Yes, it's strange that a woman like Mrs. Post should belong to one. Uh, put the card in your pocket, Harrington. Right. We may have to check that club. Mm, I can drop around and ask a few questions. Yes, do that. Uh, no need to arouse suspicion, however. Uh, put a little gray on your temples, and you can drop around as a prospective member. It's a cinch, Chief. Well, let's hope the whole case is a cinch. Now, if you'll call Dr. Colgan, Miss Miller, we'll get to work. I hope I've made everything clear, Mr. Harrison, was it? Yeah, that's right, Mr. St. Charles. You see, we don't take just anyone into our membership here. Only those we know to be sincere. Oh, I'm, I'm sincere, all right. I, I've been wanting to meet people for a long time. I see. You dance, do you? <laughs> just a little. Ah, back home, I never had much time for it. And that was where, did you say? Oh, I had a cattle ranch out west. Did you indeed? Yeah, I had 7,000 head at one time. Then when I made my pile, well, I just quit. Well, that was sensible, Mr. Harrison. We all work too hard in this life. Wear ourselves out. <laughs> you can say that again. <laughs> From now on, Mr. St. Charles, I'm just going to spend my money and enjoy myself. <laughs> I don't blame you. <laughs> yeah, well, could I uh, get into your little club here, do you think? Well, ordinarily, Mr. Harrison, I interview a candidate a number of times before we accept him. Oh, yeah, sure. Then, as I explained, we make every effort to see that you meet people of your own age and interests. Suits me. And you know, sir, you suit us. I do. You do. We'll dispense with the interviews, Mr. Harrison. You can meet the members tonight. <laughs> listed everything the neighbors mentioned, Chief. Mm -hmm. You know not one thing's been taken from this house? Well, it's difficult to understand, Miss Miller. Unless, of course, Mrs. Post kept a great deal of money someplace here on the premises. Yes. The neighbors would hardly know if it were missing or not. Well, her sister might. I've got mm -hmm. Dorothy back at the office trying to get through to her in Chicago. Yes, that'll help. And perhaps Harrington will have some luck, too. Is he still out? I guess so. He hasn't called back. Mm -hmm. He was going over to that club to see what he could find. Uh, yes, it's the mailman, I think. Uh, do you want me to see? Yes, will you? Okay. Oh, thank you. I was right, Chief. Here's a magazine and one letter. Oh? Uh -huh. It's a uh, postmark, uh, let's see, Chicago. Hmm. It's a woman's handwriting, too, Chief, probably from her sister. Here, may I look at it? Of course. Hmm. Well, I think I'll open it, Miss Miller. Under the circumstances, I can take the responsibility. Oh, sure, Chief. Anything to help. Mm. I'll keep going on this inventory. Right. Mm. Well, I'll be... Say, Miss Miller. Yes? Uh, this letter is remarkable. It may be just what we need. Well, Chief, the guy's a phony from a way back. I could smell it all over him. Uh, this Mr. St. Charles, you mean? Yeah, yeah, Miss Miller. Slick as a whistle. Even if he's got nothing to do with Mrs. Post. 
We better break up that joint of his on general principles. Yes, we have more reason than that to break it up, Harrington. Yeah? Miss Miller and I had quite a day, too. Oh, anything look good? Oh, yes, plenty. Uh, you're attending this dance at the club tonight, you said? That's right. Starts at nine. Well, all right, you be there, then. And if you can, get St. Charles into his office. And here's what we're going to do. Sorry, I'm busy. Nick, I thought I told you to stay away from here. Oh, can an old pal drop in to say goodbye, Harry? I don't want anything to do with you. You know, you con boys operate funny. We don't get mixed up in a murder. Oh, you heard about that, huh? I read the papers. It's funny, I was even thinking of giving you part of the stash. You know, just for old times' sake. You mean you got the money? All of it? I'm leaving, ain't I? What's the answer to that? But the paper said nothing was taken. You read too much, Harry. Just like back in the cell block. I had no idea. Why, sit down, Nick. No need to rush. (laughs) Oh, you kill me, you know. Now you're interested all of a sudden. No, no, I'm not, Nick. I give you my word. No kidding. Look, I took in a new member today. He's loaded, Nick. Big cattle man from out west. Well, take him, why don't you? I intend to. Only you can help me, my boy. Think of it. We'll take him together. Huh. You'll take the old dame's dough, you mean? No, thanks, Harry. I'm shoving off. Hey, do you mind if I come in, Mr. St. Charles? What? Oh, I'm sorry, Mr. Harrison. I'm busy just now. If you'll... Mr. Harrison... Now, this won't take long. Come right in, Laura. I told you I'm very Thank busy. You. Good Lord. Hello, Harry. For the love of... What's the matter? You fellas look like you've seen a ghost. I think they're surprised to see me. They don't say. Well, I I gotta get out of here. No, no, no. Stick around, Sonny. You interest me. You know, I could swear I've seen your face before. Like on the St. Louis police posters. What's going on here? Don't you remember? You came to my house last night. No. No, I didn't. Laura, I, I can't believe it. The paper said you... You were dead. Perhaps. Do you think so, Nick? Look at me. No. Don't come near me. Please, don't. Nick, listen to me. She's dead, I tell you. Really, Nick? Look again. Closer. No, I tell you. No. Harry, don't let her come near me. Mr. Harrison, please. Please take her out of here. Do you remember now, Nick? Last night? You're you're dead, I tell you. I was there. I, I saw you die. That's what I'm waiting to hear, pal. All right, back up, both of you. This is a very touchy gun. Mr. Harrison. The name is Harrington, pal. Just stand still. Okay, Chief. Better stand back, oh, ma'am. Thank you, Mr. Harrington. I do feel a little faint. Are we all set in here, Harrington? Perfect, Chief. Mm-hmm. Nick just spilled the whole story. Nick? Yeah, and a little added touch, Chief. This is our St. Louis boy. Oh. Looks kind of pale right now. Oh, Chief, the members are all waiting downstairs. Yes, we'll go down and explain things to them in just a moment, Miss Miller. Right. Are you all right, Mrs. Rogers? Yes, thank Mrs. you. Mrs. Rogers? What, what do you mean? Hey, look, uh, I don't get it. We were very fortunate, gentlemen. I think you knew Mrs. Post had a sister in Chicago. Sure, she said... Well, she... this is Mrs. Post's sister. What you didn't know, however, is that she happens to be a twin. An identical twin. <laughs> Mr. District Attorney comes to you through the worldwide facilities of the United States Armed Forces Radio Service.